I final four wheel drive. Into the top and the position. Good marshal, he's So that going on first to trigger the loop is going to be Harry Saunders. And he is wearing Brian Brady like a backpack. As so these two come round and over the big table top and then do the big drop in. Harry getting it suddenly goes wrong, but just about holding on to his place. Brian Preddy now starting to look left and right of him. And I'm being told in the silence of the baby face looks at him. Reach Ward now up to the three. Got the down on the train of the bill. I'm wondering now quite what to do. And if he thinks about it, he probably cracks. And that's going to put Reese up to the two. So drag race down the main straight. Reese is not quite able to get it done yet. But Harry Saunders still leading us. And Reese having a bit of a champion's role. Oh, Mr. Christopher. You're lucky I'm not up there. <laughs> so that going on. Harry had a bit of a champion's role himself. That's going to play back first, second and third. And these guys all out onto the main straight. Freddy was hovering back in four. And Christopher goes for an inside loop, makes it stick. In front of the race, in front of the commentary corner. Making it look smooth, but now Mark Christopher wearing his word like a backpack as they come round through this last funnel. Out on through the tricky section and onto the main straight. That gap is less than four tenths of a second. And Reese already starting to apply the pressure to old man Christopher. So he's getting a little bit wrong there. Just about saves it. So he only lost about four or five carlings. And I know he will clear that back to the approach to an half down and two and a half to go. And our second place has a complete champion's part wheel, I call that one. So he's still got it on its wheel. Manages to retain second, although Harry now a lot closer. And this is allowing. Mark Christopher to sneak off into the distance. So Reese just needs to calm down and drive it. You've only got two seconds to climb back on him. And I know you can take time out of him on a flying lap. So we'll see the time last time by was 2.1 seconds. And Reese Ward takes six tenths out of him in one lap as we approach the three minutes down, two minutes to go. We'll take it as a conventional line, just about makes it stick. These guys now are standing up through the back section. That gap, so Mark Christopher answers, takes a couple of points back, but only two. And Reese already looking like he's taking that back out of him. So that's what Reese can do. Three and a half minutes down, one and a half minutes to go. Mark Christopher thinking this is the longest five minutes he's ever taken part in. And that gap now, 1.2 seconds. So Reese is taking three cents out of him. And we are looking at Reese closing down on Mark Christopher. These two heading out onto the main straight with one minute to go. That gap looks to have opened up just a touch. In fact, Mark Christopher takes one tenth only out of him. And here comes Reese once again. Oh, and Reese there getting a triple Falco. Somehow manages to stick it back on its wheels, but going to lose about half a second doing so. And then two trying to close down on back market. So he will enter the straight in it now with 45, 45 seconds to go. Mark is away. Come on, Gibbo. And that is your leader. Thank you. <laughs> and that's one uh, getting out with rate car rate. So that gap back down to 1.5 seconds. And if they cross the line this time, they will be starting their final lap. 
So Reese can look to stamp and send it. And that gap down to 1.3. Reese has got nothing to lose. He's got about a three second lead over third. Just keep pushing it. And he watches his guys coming round. And over the line. Oh, he goes to his side move. Can't quite make it stick as the concrete got in the way. G final four wheel drive. And off they thunder into the first corner. And the only question is, is Gibbo going to be a hero or a zero? At the moment he's heading towards zero. <laughs> and Andy Manning thinks, thank God, I'm not going to be beaten by Gibbo yet. <laughs> he's not always yet, he won't see Gibbo's horsepower. Tell me, Smithy has turned that up to 11. I believe at least, probably 15. You'll see. <laughs> Here, Here we go. go. So Gibbo goes, Clarkson style. <laughs> Clarkson is only fairly big squad. I'm impressed. <laughs> you are rubbish. Back to the racing, and Liam Bone's going to lead this round. He's already to check out land. You still want it from there, Gibbo? No worries. No, he can't. <laughs> so Joey waves his pom to cheer Gibbo on. Gibbo's almost caught the pack back up already. But our leader is out onto the main straight. Had a three and a half second lead last time by. Now it's going to be four and a half. So it looks like Liam is on his way to Tesco's to check out. And Ian Jarman is going to start doing everything he can to try and close that gap back down. And Gibbo finally makes himself up a float. He's no longer last, which means Steve Davis, you are fired from your team drive. Nathan, the rule was we have to keep extending the final until Gibbo's in the lead in maybe 11 minutes. Right, okay, do we stick a four pack in his car for that? So Gibbo's cheerleading squad starting to get a little bit lackluster over in the corner there. But like, ooh, love it. Gibbo though trying to catch back up to that gaggle. He's got oh, Gibbo, send it. He's looking through the bomb, oh, he's got the power. He's going to unleash it on the straight in a Clarkson style. Yeah, with no talent whatsoever. And still going to sit in ninth place. Steve Davis doing everything he can to retrieve his drive and get back past Gibbo. Just don't let him lap you, so you've had a way you will have to do that run down the straight with Tony Holmes. We're two and a half down, two and a half to go, it's still Liam Bone at the front. Four and a half seconds to the good from Andy Manning, Trevor Folderson, Jason Potter, Ewan Jarman, still at Hicks, still Hicks, Paul Crocker, Gibbo now up to eight. And then Daniel Lager and Steve Davis. Come on Steve, elbows out. Gibbo though now started to look at seven. He's got it right. Power for every. Oh, Gibbo, what are you doing, man? <laughs> no, even I don't make it at that painful. Right, so Steve has just been rehired as an X-ray driver because he's ahead of Gibbo. Yeah. And with all this going on, Andy Manning out for the point. Got about a half second lead, we'll see if he can pick him up. And the scratch that is Liam Bone back to the point. So Andy Manning here, Liam Bone, which is for your race to your final with just over a minute on the clock. Liam getting it slightly wrong, but manages to hang on to the lead. Lead two going up through the bomb and up to the tricky back section, heading out onto the main straight. White and blue is your leader. Orange works at white and blue in second place. And your leader has a bit of a champion role. That's going to put Andy Manning to the point with 50 seconds on the clock. 
And the crowd still only interested in Gibbo. <laughs> Go on, Steve, round the outside. So I'm going to pay John Coffield 50p if he looks the other way if Steve gets anywhere near Gibbo. And as I say that, Steve runs out of balance. So Gibbo now says, Steve, you're back to being fired with 15 seconds on the clock. And let's pick up our two leaders up in here, who's and ours. Looks like Gibbo might be down for position, try and do a triple salto with it. And you two will be racing to the line, Gibbo. So let's send it. Go on, Gibbo. So Gibbo starting to look left and right of the Hitchman vehicle. And these two racing to the line. Can Gibbo get it? He's going to go for a drive. <laughs> Like a cream egg with one corner to go. Give him give a sympathy spot.